what you started with. Okay. I'll, yeah, okay. So your full name, please. Ted Sakio Hashimoto. And spell your, your middle name, please. S-A-K-I-O, which means to blossom like a flower and frail. That's me. Anyway, uh, I was born in St. Gabriel, just a few miles from here. My dad had a farm there. And uh, I was always sickly by the time I was a little kid. Well, when I was a little kid, I don't really remember. But by the time I got to old enough to start going to school, I had allergies. Uh, allergic to everything. But anyway, consequently I was not allowed to go out and and I wasn't healthy like the rest of the family so I, I was always kind of left home by my dad. Wasn't exposed to anything strenuous and so forth. Japanese school was the schools that we had to go after school the regular schools, three times a week, Saturdays. And I have, <clears throat> there's six of us, and I'm right about in the middle. I have an older brother who is seven years older than I, big, strong, and healthy. I've always remembered him that. He can do everything in the world. Then there's my sister older than that, who used to take care of all my aches and pains. I had another sister that was slightly older than the night. I used to fight with all the time. And I have two young sisters. They were nice. But when I got into Japanese school, there's always a couple of guys who come over and pick me every Saturday and pick on me and shove me a couple of times. And then I'd sit down and cry and they'll call me Nakabeso. That was it. They would leave me go. It got so that other Japanese kids wouldn't play with me at that Jap school. It's the San Gabriel Japanese school that is still in existence from what I understand. And it got so that I just hated going there. So I didn't do too well there. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there was a real cute girl named Sakae Kaito who lived a block from us, which was right next to the San Gabriel Mission. And her father <clears throat> used to take me and her daughter Sakai, who is just about my age, to Japanese school. How old were you then? I was, must have been about seven, eight. I was born in 1921, so that would be the latter part of the 20s. And she was the only other Japanese girl that I really met. I had a crush on her. <laughs> A real crush. She never known, but I never said anything. Because if I did, she that I knew she'd clobber the hell out of me. But in time, we moved to Arcadia, and that's when I met a lot of Japanese people in Arcadia. At that time, that was just all land with tall weeds, few farms around. Just about all the farmers were there. There were a lot of kids my age. And that's when I used to got to, to going out and playing with the boys. And it got to the point where my dad would want me to start doing work around the house. Well, if I felt like it, I'd do it. If I didn't, I got more and more independent. As a matter of fact, he had me under his thumb. I was out of it, and I just for some reason, I just didn't want much to do with anything with the family, especially the, my parents, my father. But as time goes on, and neighbors used to go to the beaches. I was never allowed to go to beaches or anything. I used to go to beaches, 
Could you tell my parents where I was? I go try to get a towel, jump on a truck with a weekend, running around in the sun, in the sunny air, the salty air, and so forth. I had been sick every year before that, at least three successive years to the point I was two years behind school. I never got, I would never got sick that summer. First time I was liberated. And I tell you, I have never been sick since. All of a sudden, I started to grow. And one day, by then, there was a Japanese plant, uh, school that had come next to our ranch, and there was a Japanese school there, and I, I went there. And one day, two guys came over to talk to me, and one guy kind of crawled behind me. I said, uh oh. And I just stood right up to him. For some reason, I said, I wasn't about to back down, back down this time. And he started to say something, and I, and I said, boom, I kicked this guy in the back and around. All I heard was a grunt. And I stood there, they didn't say a word, and I says, what? Turned around and walked away. Never was bothered, never bothered me after that. Were they Japanese American? Japanese, that's Japanese school, on a Saturday. At the grade school, I got along fine with the Caucasian kids. My favorite was ringing the big bell, San Gabriel. When that 730 bell rang, I'd be right there at the bell to sing that big one ton. And, and that was my ambition every morning, to ring that bell. As for my friends, that wonderful relationship. That's when I grew up in Arcadia. And uh, once I seemed to get along in, this, in, in, in Japanese school, I used to do well because there's this other girl, but the other girl, she didn't move to Arcadia with me. So I didn't care too much for Japanese school. And the teacher, Oda Sensei, was quite typical Japanese teacher, and he would have his instructions. If we did do a lesson or something, he had a pole or something, or a ruler, I think it was, with bangers in the hand, so forth. But <clears throat> I did survive, and I had almost 10 years of Japanese schooling. At this time, were your parents did your parents speak to you in Japanese when you were at home? Yes, I did, but we were not, we, we didn't talk to each other too much. There were six of us kids, mm -hmm. and uh, all I, 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 to, to tell you the truth, I had no idea anything about the background of my parents or anything. I didn't learn that until I was well into my 60s and 70s, I learned it all from my brother, <clears throat> the one that was seven years older than I. But anyway, working on a farm, I would run away from home. I'd, many times my dad tell me to do something and I would refuse and I'd be afraid to go home or I wouldn't go home. I'd just go to the neighbors, eat over there, sleep overnight in their shed. They had a big shed in the middle of the farm. I ate their melon for breakfast and that's how I existed for a day or two until my mother sent my older brother Bill to pick me up and tell me to come home. I had this long table for breakfast or meals usually. He would sit over there and I would sit over the farthest corner and that's the way I kind of survived. But as I got uh, <clears throat> older, I seemed to do better, and I went to grade school. My my brother was the 
in judo. All my friends took judo, kendo, and everything, but I was never allowed to do that. Even when the kids were picking on me at the old school, the other kids would tell me, tell your brother, he'll take care of me, and he would. He was strong enough to take three of these guys and beat the hell out of them, you know. Never did, so. My brother and I got kind of further and further apart. But I grew up in Arcadia. I grew healthier. I discovered weightlifting and boxing. And after I learned how to box and weightlifting, I began to grow strong and was, like I said, I was never sick after that. I did fairly well in school. I didn't do too well in Japanese school, but I passed, I guess. But I was always health conscious. I never smoked. The guys would take, try to get smoke, you get uh, weeds and make cigarettes and stuff. I never wanted to do that. I never drank. <coughs> my father never drank. And I, for some reason, I made up my mind that I would take care of myself and I would not smoke, I don't drink. That was, and that was my pretty much aim. That's when I, that's the way I grew up into high school and so forth. By then, since I didn't get any money from my family or my dad, I'd go looking for little jobs around the neighborhood. And by then, there were houses started to build in Arcadia. Right next to that, there was a brood ranch. At Brood Ranch is where they would raise racehorses. Matter of fact, there was a big ranch, Rennie Strayers, another smaller one, and another one beyond that was a little bigger one. So I had to have some kind of an income. So I used to go there to the where the rails were and watch them, what they were doing. I said, ah, oh, I could do that. So I went to the furthest one on the other side and asked for a job. He says, have you worked with horses? Oh, yeah. We have horses. I follow the horses up and down the furrows. I must have been, I would guess, maybe 16. So they put me to work, and they had <coughs> horses here. That was the first job I had, and I would work. I would. I was making fifty cents a day. Three dollars and fifty cents a week, rain or shine, every day I was there, twice a day, before and after school. Clean the stalls, take the horses out, lock the horses up, so forth. Had a little dog. I call him Leo now, but I remember I had another name, but he's, I call him Leo. And he <coughs> was my pet. He would go with me to the farm, towards the, from the farm to the edge of the, or the uh, road farm rides, and I tell him, stay, he'll wait. And I do my work and I go back and pick him up. And, uh, Early in the morning, about three or two o'clock in the morning, I have a sister that's two years older than I. We'll call her Marge. She and I would harvest, pick the uh, vegetables and so forth. And, and early in the morning, and we'd bundle them up like carrots and so forth bring them into the shed, water it down, and then that's what's in addition to the regular work I had. My job was after school and after my uh, other doors working, working at home or whatever, my job was to take this produce of my little pickup truck we had to market down in Illinois. I would take my dog 
every time I got in there, he'd be right there waiting for me. And I'd just look at him and open the door. He'd hop in and hop me go. And there's a long driveway to the street. He'd poke his head out. He'd watch the neighborhood dogs envy him. It's almost like he was driving. I was, that was my companion coming home later in the towards early evening after dropping down and down and the vegetables off of downtown. I'd come out First Street all the way out towards East LA, pick up tamales from these little carts on the side of the street and I'd share that with my dog and he's my companion. So One, Mr. Hashimoto, so your, your parents were farmers? Farmers. What, what kind of Vegetable what kind of farmers. What, what, what type of vegetables? Carrots, turnips, radish, and then melons. Mm -hmm. And at this time, you, you, your job, as you said, was, was to help on the farm. And uh, if we could go back, please. Oh, you had said earlier that in Arcadia at this time there were, there were all kinds of farms. Um, what types of farms were there? Shrug farms. I'm sorry, sir? Shrug farms. And what are those? Vegetables. Mm -hmm. Usually the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Not orchards or anything, just, oh. just farms. And these were uh, uh, farmed by Japanese Americans? Japanese, yes. There were several. They were big, white ones, farmers there also. But they were ranches rather than farms. Mm -hmm. And around them there was all this land. And I imagine it was in the maybe late 20s or before they were people like the Sakamoto's and, and Okamoto's and a few others that had, had, had settled there. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remember as I was growing up. Do you happen to know who owned the land that your parents farmed? I have no idea. Maybe knew it was the Baldwin estate, maybe not. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But your parents did not own the farm? They were not owned because they weren't allowed to own it. If, if, if I may, um, getting back to your parents, um, where did they come from? My father came from Kumamoto. And, yeah, go ahead. And I really don't know the history until later on as I get old, but my father came from Kumamoto. My mother came from Fukuoka, which is adjoining mm -hmm. province. Mm -hmm. Now, whether she was a picture bride was already married, I am not sure. As <clears throat> your father, uh, do you happen to know um, where in the family he was? Was he the oldest, the youngest, or in the middle? My father, I know, I understand, was the youngest. And consequently, he was not going to inherit any land or anything. So, he went to Hawaii to seek his fortune, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And from there, there was two stories. There was one story where he got into a fight with somebody or he wanted to go leave Hawaii, but whatever it was, he got on one of the ships and sailed to the mainland mm -hmm. and worked on the railroad. And I'm assuming, as he was working on the on, on the railroad and seeing all this land, I don't know how many years he waited, but early, maybe 19, 10, 12, around there. In Piwanti, he and a couple of people, I guess, they would got together. 
went out to the beyond to hear so where there was land available but but it's not land that was ready or good land it's only kind of land that they could get mm -hmm. so they a couple three of them got together and they got there and started a farm build a little shack and that's how they got started when, when you say it was it was you know, not good land, and uh, and then your father and some of his <clears throat> associates started the farm. How did they do it if 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 the land wasn't that good? What what did they do to make it able to? I really don't know at that point because I have no idea because because when I came into a life. They were, he already was farming a good sized piece of land in San Gabriel. And that was flat land that covered almost a triangle. I call that about 25 acres, but it probably could have been 24 acres, 25 acres. He had a pretty good sized farm. He's one of the a large farm in those. That's where I was born. and. That's all I know. The rest is what I learned from my brother years later. Can, can you describe whatever you can remember? The house that you grew up in, how large was it? How many rooms? The houses were built by the Japanese themselves. Not like a house was built in, uh, on the land that they owned, so they built something like a, not, well, not a temporary house, but it actually used recycled planks from the irrigation plumes and so forth. And uh, it had a couple of bedrooms, a right person for the living room or whatever, down on the ground level or two or three fireplaces. That's where they had the, where you did the cooking and living. Outside was an outhouse with running water. The house did not have a running water other than just a faucet or two. And that place was where the, where the toilet was and the footal and that's where the bathing was. Mm -hmm. And that thing was filled with holes and so forth and and that's was the kid's duty to start the fire so they'd be nice and warm by the time dad came home from the farm. And what did you use for the for the fire? Was it wood? Where we lived had eucalyptus trees. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of them. And our old houses were kind of built underneath there. It was like a home built farm. You could see that there were recycled flumes and so forth. And uh, no electricity. But it was wired for electricity. It was wired for electricity. It was wired electricity, and I used to wonder when I was a kid. And it's got this the outlet for uh, a light bulb, and I used to wonder, you know, how come those things don't light up? You know, like the other houses across the street where the white people live. Well, the contractor did do the wiring in the house took on and got paid, and that was it. Never hooked it up for anything. Same thing in the, the bathroom. We had to have these kerosene lamps or whatever. I used to marvel the fact that there'd be holes in the wall that was patched. I would, I, you know, I would notice that. Anyway, when we moved to Arcadia, 
we actually, my dad actually had a house built, a frame house. Regular carpenters, a regular house, not from recycled lumbers or anything. It was a small house and I would see, I remember that they would have this little house with running water, water be piped in, pipe electricity and so forth. It was in uh, several hundred feet in from the road, but then the, we farmed around. I remember seeing that thing grow and being fixed before we moved in. And I was amazed the facts that we had a hot and cold water in the inside of the house. Electricity. That was Arcadia. Do you happen to remember or know why did your parents decide to move to Arcadia? What was the reason? <clears throat> I really don't know the reason. It was right about the Depression time. If you, but whether that had anything to do it or not, I don't know. Uh, the reason for their moving, I have no no idea. But they moved to to uh, another farm area. It was a it was a farm, a a good sized farm. Was it larger than than the former? Uh, I wouldn't say so. He had a pretty good spread there in, in San Gabriel, but it was pretty good sized. But there were other farmers across the street on all sides. They were also farming. There were also still at that point, there were parcels of land that had weeds and wasn't farmed or no houses just yet. And would you do you recall were they were the Japanese Americans actually uh, uh, moving into areas where the farmland was uh, was not necessarily good good farmland, but they somehow managed to develop it? Well, in uh, in our case, it seems like it was decent land. It's not as if they were like when he first started when they left the railroad, uh, railroads to start that was way to hell out in they call Puente Hills now mm -hmm. there's up in the hills there. You know, that mm -hmm. was not the best land. Uh -huh. but this, these were level and it's a uh, Pretty good size. When, when you say pretty good size, sir, uh, what what do you remember about why were people like your, your, your parents able to get pretty large pieces of land? Now, when you get, get don't forget they were leasing land. I'm sorry, leasing, leasing uh, land? Leasing land before you couldn't buy it. Uh -huh. and but so they leased the land and we did level it up, plied it up, prepared it, planted, and paying the rent, that's what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And we built a house on it, eventually, we decided to move. What happened was that the housing started on one side of, this, of us and they were coming this way. Other houses were coming this way and it's coming to the point where the landlord wanted to subdivide it. So that's probably the reason we had to move. So we moved about three or four miles away, not not too far. Mm -hmm. We, my parents I guess, or my big brother, had this house jacked up, put on wheels, and it was towed to a place in Arcadia 
where it was kind of Second Avenue, one of those Valnet ones like this, was a big piece of land, no side streets. So in about 200 feet from the, from the, from the Second Avenue side was the dirt road going in. And there were white residents along the street. And this piece of land, I would guess, was about four acres, maybe five. And that's where we started to farm. And that's when I noticed that the, uh, where the brood ranch e either was there or started right about then. I don't, I don't really know. But it must have been there already because this racetrack in, Saint, in Arcadia was started about the mid-30s, I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. And these brood ranches started out. So I'm pretty sure that the, ran the, the brood ranch is there and we were farming a piece. And I would guess maybe three acres at the most. And that's where we put the house down, dig cesspools, Pop the water and then we started farming there. Mr. Hashimoto, to, to move a house from your previous location to the new location, was it that expensive? I am pretty sure it was. I have no idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, they moved it up there and it was on the jacks and so forth. I'd swear for months, but it couldn't have been that long. But the house we were just sitting in, it was on stilts. We lived in that house in Arcadia, that, that the latest spot. Uh, but it was intact. And somehow we couldn't use toilets. We had outside toilets. Mm -hmm. But we moved the house there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had Caucasian neighbors in the front side and there we were kind of isolated, but we were surrounded and back of us was this brood ranch. I'm curious, would you describe your, your, your parents' income level at that time as well off? I would think that my father at one time may or may not have money, but uh, seemed to me the depression or the, or the big crash in 29 and early 30s, I think affected him. Now, I, from what I understand pretty much uh, is that my father moved from there, from San Gabriel to Arcadia on borrowed money. Now, not from the regular banks, but there were other Japanese, or I'm assuming there were Japanese, who were, had able to accumulate a certain amount of money and the reason I say that is because ever so often I used to hear my father and the bill collector was over there talking in Japanese and trying to get dad to pay or whatever. But anyway, I remember that. When I was about 12, My parents evidently didn't get along well. I'm sorry, say that again? Evidently my parents didn't get along too well. well. Why do you say that, sir? Because they were always fighting. But anyway, when I was about 12, my mother, my sister, I had a sister, older sister, that was eight or nine years younger than me, older than Bill. 
and she was old enough to get married by that time. By the time she was 16, she was, they took her out of school and they made, put her on the farm, working on the farm. And by the time she became a certain age, whatever age she, I don't, I don't remember, but by 1932, 33, around 34, she was married off to a Kibe man, stranger, so to speak. Now, <clears throat> why she was married off to that or not, or not, all I know is that it must have been traditional. He, she had a boyfriend, and uh, but uh, they were never allowed to go unless they had my sis, my sister, who was just two years older than I, as chaperone any time they went. But I didn't learn that until much later. But anyway, she never was dated. Uh, allowed to date or anything. She did have a boyfriend and he asked for her hand and all I know is that my dad's bedroom was here, the living room is here, and our bedroom was on this side and a dry and the hallway to the kitchen and so forth. My sister, who's two years older than I call Marge, who me she and I were sitting in the living room in this here. And I remember seeing this man, they going in there and they're talking to me. Couldn't understand what they were saying. In, the, in my dad's bedroom. All of a sudden, the door bursts open. He comes out in tears. And he's out the door and he's gone. Who comes out in tears? The guy who wanted to ask my father for her daughter's hand, his daughter's hand. That's how I remember him. And I thought to myself, okay, what's going on? Years later, I asked my sister, that's two years older than I, how did my big sister, how did she take it? Is she all right? She said she was broken hearted when that happened. And of course, I didn't know until years later. And it was soon after that that he, she was married off to this other Kibe man that was older, mm -hmm. more of the better Nihon I guess, mm -hmm. the way I know, I looked at it. But the upshot of the whole thing, though, was she evidently was protecting my mother. Anytime they have a flare-up, she would be the one to, to uh, get in between and cry or whatever. And so, when she was married off, my brother, who was, like I say, seven years older than I, a couple of years younger than that, my other sister, arranged her to, to leave the house. And I realized many, many years later that is what saved her life. Evidently, my brother had witnessed a lot of this. I hesitate to bring this out. It came out kind of naturally in sequence. It's not pleasant, but it did happen. So once 
My sister was married up, and my mother left. My sister and I, Mark's the one that's a little older than I, kept thinking if we get rid of father, maybe mother would come home. And it's probably in my autobiography where it made his life so unpleasant that he finally left to work on the farm in the, in the Cochoro Valley or whatever, up in central California. Happy as hell, my sister was old enough to drive. I must have been about 14 by the time she was 16. We drove from Arcade to the Terminal Island to tell my mother she could come home. She explained that she had raised up to whatever and take care of her. And I, like a stupid dope, told her, you don't come home now and now. I never want to see you again. 